Errol Barnett looks at what may be behind the rise in all these homicides. What have the past few months been like for you? Uh, a tragic couple of months. Pastor Donovan Price doesn't need statistics to tell him violence in Chicago is up since the pandemic began. You see, he goes to crime scenes in his underserved community to comfort shattered families, often victims of random violence. In your view, why are things uh, apparently getting worse? There's a lot of things that perhaps are coming to head. We were living in a war zone before the pandemic. And so a pandemic on top of a war zone, on top of of systemic issues um, is, of course, um, a problem on top of a problem. If we do nothing, it seems to me we're in for several more months of elevated violence. Criminologist Richard Rosenfeld is a professor at the University of Missouri, St. Louis. He and his team recently released this study on COVID-19 and crime. It analyzed 11 criminal offenses in 27 cities and found during the pandemic, domestic violence and aggravated assault rose and homicides spiked 37 percent from May to June, with the most dramatic increases in Chicago, Philadelphia and Milwaukee. In July, the Chicago Tribune reported at least 107 people were killed, making it the most violent month there in nearly three decades. One now has to speculate about why we see those increases. It could be because of uh, the impact of the pandemic on police activity. And also one has to consider the fact that in many cities, the police were redeployed from their normal patrols to address protest activity. In late May, protests began nationwide against police brutality following the death of George Floyd. Protests recently erupted in Kenosha, Wisconsin, over the police shooting of Jacob Blake. A recent poll found confidence in law enforcement has hit a record low. U.S. Attorney General Bill Barr recently tried to blame the crime uptick on some protesters' demands to defund the police. I think it also is related to the efforts that we've recently seen to demonize police and to defund their work. The NYPD is moving officers where they're needed, engaging with the community more deeply to fight crime, uh, increasing gun arrests. In New York City, homicides in the last month are up 50 percent compared to the same time last year and 34 percent year to date, with 280 murders so far in 2020. I think it's something that we've ignored for a long time, gangs. But the real problem in America lies in handguns. Eric Adams is the Brooklyn Borough president and a former NYPD captain. He's calling for a multi-state gun task force to address the violence. Do we ask our police officers in general to do too much? Yes, we do. No matter what happens, we immediately want to call the police to handle it. That is not the form of policing that we need. We need to have greater crisis management teams. We need to have young people be involved in dealing with low-level nuisances. And then our faith-based institution must become more proactive. Back in Chicago, Pastor Donovan is grappling with the most innocent victims of crime, children. This is where it came out. Mm-hmm. That's where the bullet exited her body, mm-hmm. out of the front, and it entered through her back. Mm-hmm. That's good. Wow. On June 30th, Pastor Donovan was there minutes after three-year-old Diana was shot in her back while playing outside her home. Diana survived, but no one has been arrested for her shooting. Deirdre Taylor is her mother. Do you remember that day? You remember when you got shot? What do you remember about how that felt and what was happening around you? Outside. What would you say to people who hear about these shootings? I was saying, it's serious. It's no joke. It's important to know that more than a bullet gets penetrated lives get penetrated and in this world in this city you're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution right now um there's there's no in between for cbs this morning errol barnett new york pastor donovan said something very interesting there it's more than a bullet that penetrates i know this a three-year-old child should never be asked do you remember the day you got shot no three-year-old should ever be asked that question 